bioeconomy can become an economic powerhouse for Europe, providing major returns and added value on what we invest. Each euro invested in bioeconomy research and innovation is expected to trigger another 10 euro of added value in the bioeconomy by 2025. The objective of this Europa Bio Benefits event was really to spell out in very concrete terms using products that exist and processes that exist, what are the benefits that biotechnology in agriculture, healthcare and industrial terms brings to society today. We see more and more targeted specific therapies which are able to match directly an underlying genetic mechanism with a uh, protein or an antibody type of, of mechanism. Biotechnology is a good thing for hemophilia people, yes. The innovation offers opportunity to produce things that were not possible to produce. We have, for example, microalgae for new food ingredients. We can uh, produce with more quality above all with more quality. Biotechnologies has uh, enabled the industry to uh, manufacture new clotting factors um, which are safer, which can be produced in qu quantities. It allows us to harvest uh, the, in the better conditions and uh, above all we can uh, be much more competitive with other countries. Les biotechnologies met l'Union européenne sur le chemin de l'Europe 2020, nous permettant de nous protéger dans une Europe plus innovante, plus moderne, plus dynamique, une Europe qui n'a pas peur de son avenir. Biotech is a complicated uh, area, it's a technology, you need to really understand what it is. I think the, it's, a, it's a global industry, it's a global uh, discussion we need to be having. In Europe we're don't, not really keen on new things, um, we don't immediately think new, that'll be better, what's in it for me, we immediately think what's the risk. So I think that's the main reason that we're really trying to discuss about products that exist, not about dreams or about nightmares, but really products and processes, and then people can choose, do they want them or do they not want them, but they need to choose based on facts and not emotions. By 2050, the world's population will have leaped to 9 billion people from 7 billion today. It is estimated that by then, demand for food will have increased by 70%, while energy needs will double. So we do need a thriving and sustainable bioeconomy in Europe to help us move towards a post-carbon economy where we live within the limits of our renewable natural resources. Proper consideration of safety and benefits is crucial to take advantage of the potential of this technology. I sincerely hope that the long-awaited second generation of GMOs offering benefits such as uh, drought tolerance and improved nutritional profiles will meet the high expectations that the industry has created. 78 billion uh, US dollars, 78 billion US dollars, that's the advantage to benefit um, uh, at farm level. And last but not least, it has also significant impact to uh, the ecology. Uh, alone in 2010, there was a reduction of greenhouse gases emission which corresponds to 8 million cars with a uh, 15, 20,000 kilometer uh, driver's um, uh, capacity. Benefits for people and benefits for the economy. If biotech products match public needs and expectations, the future is assured. Regulators always have politicians in their back. Politicians, legislators care about activists going after them. Uh, biotech SMEs always feel they can't do what they should be able to do because finance is not around. Big Pharma uh, is not always efficient in doing the right research. That's why uh, they want to outsource it uh, to SMEs. Politicians should go to the, to the farmers, to the land, and uh, to know what is the, the, what they are doing and uh, to look to the environment. This is for me a, a very major hurdle of the development of biotechnology in Europe because you will have North America, Asia being the leaders of this new industry while we are very good, I feel, for the innovation in Europe that is the research and the development. Our message to policymakers and to stakeholders in Brussels but also in Europe is really when it comes to biotechnology or any technology, before you make decisions, make sure you know the facts, 
check the safety, and once the safety is there, make sure you give citizens a choice. You know, there is never tax policy for a sector. There is tax policy around issues. And of course, there's tax policy for innovation. There's tax policy for creating jobs. There's tax policy uh, for intangibles. There's tax policy to be attractive for companies to invest uh, and to make sure uh, that more jobs are created, more tax income is generated for the respective government. Next year we are going to launch a European Biotechnology Week. So we're going to try and ensure that the dialogue expands not only here in Brussels but also in member states so that there is more understanding of biotechnology, the products and the benefits.